morning, everybody. Um, so, on um, today is Wednesday. We will have a photo session at noon in front of the, this building, the Trauma Center. Um, so please stay here for a few minutes before we go for lunch. Um, on Friday, we have scheduled either a tour to the Sina Lab, which is on the other side of the river. We have to take a bus there. It's a seven-minute bus drive. Um, or we stay here and continue with the practicals. And we will offer both. So some people stay here. In the, in the computer room to do additional practicals or help with processing your own data set or whatever you want to do. And other people will go to Sina for a lab tour. And in Sina we have a Titan and a Polara and a few other microscopes, a free view um, scanning electron microscope. That's a scanning electron microscope with a diamond knife, which Winfried Denk developed. We also have a FIP SEM, yeah, which uh, uses a focused ion beam to remove surface. A VitroBot is there, high pressure freezers, and you can visit all that and speak with the people that use that. Um, on the Polara, Kenny has prepared, um, together with TVIPS, Ingo Dabakov from Teats, um, a demonstration of spot scanning on the Polara with uh, dynamic focus adjustment. That's the first time we use it. We hope it works, but it's, it's a new development that Teats implemented. Um, in their or TVIPS implemented in their software, this TVIPS. And if you buy one of their cameras, um, we have this 4K by 4K CMOS camera, which is very fast and relatively affordable compared to other direct electron detectors. Then it comes, uh, or you can buy it with the software. And the software in this case now is capable of doing spot scan with dynamic focus adjustment. And we will have a demonstration of that 20 minutes or so. Um, so that's the two alternatives on Friday, and we would like to ask you to sign up in either of the two, or, or none if you want to return home earlier, um, so we see how many people go to which session. And this is here on the wall, these two white papers. Um, yeah, okay. What? <laughs> You didn't listen. <laughs> I said before, there's the, fo the photo session is at noon. Okay, yeah, for the ones that didn't come, wake up early enough. So, <laughs> thanks for the help. <laughs> yeah, and, and then there's also two papers on the wall. I said she didn't see that. Okay. So today it's about um, merging. Um, we have processed one image so far, and in the practicals you were asked to import only one single image. Yeah? So what uh, we have done is you start always with 2DX merge, and I think we have configured it so that if you click on 2DX, what actually is opened is 2DX merge, because that's the starting point that you always should use. And then you import only one single image, and if you name your images in the correct convention, or if you define your convention yourself, then Importing is very quick because 2DX Merge will, from the file name, understand what the protein name is, what the tilt angle is, and what the negative number is. And then you process this one image in 2DX Image, as we have done. Um, and when you are happy and you have determined the letters and you have also make sure, made sure the magnification and pixel size is ready, is correct, then you can um, calculate the real space lattice. In our case, it was 103 by 103 angstroms with a 90 degree angle, and it was a P4 symmetry. You will um, still see that. And then you, have, then you are done with one image. And you can also find out all the optimal uh, unbending parameters. Yeah? So you, you do the one image manually as good as you can. And then you have done that, then you save this database not only locally, so Locally, you would save it with, with this button here, right? Then you save all these parameters locally for this one image. Um, but you can save it also here with this one. That's project default. Yeah, this, this option. Uh, where is this? This, as project default. And when you do this, then you override the database of 2DX merge with all these parameters that you have here. 
um, then you can do this and then um, close 2DX image and then go back to 2DX merge and now in 2DX merge you have to quit this program by from the pull down menu just quit it without saving because if you would save then you would have your own parameters and write them back into 2DX merges database so you don't save it here you just quit yeah, so you just do um, quit and then 2DX merge is gone and then you reopen 2DX merge and it will automatically open to the same location that's fast but the next time it opens it has then all the parameters that you manually optimize for this one image and then 2DX merge has as default settings everything that you did manually P4 symmetry, 103 by 103 angstroms, 90 degree angle your perfect unbending parameters that's how I do it that's how it's it's supposed to be. Um, so, launch 2DX merge, you import one image, you optimize it, you do the image processing as until it's perfect, and then you save these parameters as project default into 2DX merges database. Then you quit 2DX merge and reopen it so that it then at relaunching reads now its database, which is the optimized settings. This is the image processing what we have done so far. You start with your raw image, you have this mask Fourier transform, you calculate the reference from tightly masked and you have to optimize this size of the reference. Um, you have to optimize the masking um, radius here for this masking here, 20 pixels and this could be 400 pixels width or so and these and this and that is then cross-correlated by going to Fourier space and multiplying these two together and then you have your cross-correlation map when you go back to real space. And this cross-correlation map is used by the MRC program Quad Search to find your lattice distortions, these lines, they should look like a fur. And when you have these lines, the MRC program CC Unbend uses this to unbend your raw image and make a perfect image. Um, this is then Fourier transformed, and for each spot here, um, the program MM Box reads out an amplitude and phase number. And then you can CTF correct this. <clears throat> then you have your amplitudes and phases um, CTF corrected from one image for each spot, and you can make a map with that. And today, <clears throat> it's about merging. That we do the same thing also for other images and then we merge them all together so that in the end we get one averaged amplitudes and phase data set from many images. That's what it's about today. Um, okay, so you process one image, you save it as project default. This is actually a slide. Um, <clears throat> and this is the normal structure as you would have it later on your hard drive. There is your root directory, which in this case is um, protein split F, and it ends there. That's your root directory. And in there, you have subdirectories for non tilted, 30 degree tilted, 45 degree tilted images later. And you have one merge directory, and this is where 2DX merge resides. And 2DX merge has its own database, 2DX merge.config which has all these parameters for merging. Um, <clears throat> and also each image, so far we were processing this first image, also each image there has a database which is called 2dximage.config. It's in this directory. Um, <clears throat> and when you work in, on the first image and then save this local database as project default, um, it uses goes to this link which points to that file and it overwrites this config file here. And the 2DX image config file and the 2DX merge config files, they are the same syntax, the same files. Uh, they are just read by different programs. 2DX image reads for each image the 2DX image config file which resides in this or in that or that. There's many copies of those files and 2DX merge deals only with this file here. And this one is a link that points to that. And this one is a link that points to that. 
this is done uh, for synchronization. Like um, the P4 symmetry needs to be only saved here, and all the others then go via the link, via the link to this one to look up what the actual symmetry is, P4. And it should be the same for the entire project. So you have saved your project default, which is you overwrote this one, you quit 2DX merge, you reopen 2DX merge, and then you have these parameters in the actual running 2DX merge database. And then, since now 2DX merge has, by, as default settings, the optimized parameters, you now import all other images. Yeah? And with this import function, this can be fairly fast. If you have 100 images and you saved them all on your microscope, using some naming convention that contains the protein name, the tilt angle, and the micrograph number, then this import function will very rapidly help you to get this all sorted up. So I use, we use usually four letters for the protein name, two digits for the tilt angle here, six digits for the micrograph number, and in the end, I, there is a zero one for the first time we process this image. If you have two lattices, you can later call this zero two, 0, 01 and 0, 02, for example, or the sub images or so. Um, so, if you have some naming convention on the microscope for your TIFF files, then this import function allows you to import 100 images in one go. Yeah? And then, when you click OK, you have to wait, nothing happens, and you wait a moment because all these images are copied into subfolders here um, with um, superfolders that, that are sorted by tilt angle. So, this is 45 degree because here it's 4-5 in the name, then this import function understands it's a 45 degree tilted sample. So um, the program makes this subfolder and puts these three subfolders there for the three images, <coughs> copies the TIFF file there, and in each of these, <coughs> 2DX Merge then will install a copy of this 2DX image config file. And the 2DX image config file will then be populated with the default values that 2DX merge now has, which is P4 symmetry, 103 by 103 angstroms, 90 degree angle, 20 pixel radius is optimized unbending radius, and so on. All the optimized default parameters that we found out the hard way for the first image, they will now already populate the config files for all other images. And if you did the first one right, then hopefully all the others can be processed automatically. Yeah, if the, these parameters are already the default parameters, then you should just say, okay, now process all. I go home, I come back tomorrow. Hopefully all 100 images are processed when I come back. Yeah, so sometimes this works. Sometimes the processing, optimized processing parameters for non-tilted images are different than for tilted images. Yeah. <clears throat> for example, the tilt angle. And here, it should not try to find out a tilt angle because there is none. It just um, <coughs> invites for failure. Here at 45 degree tilt, you really have to search the tilt geometry. So here you would set that to on by default and here to off by default. Yeah, And because um, each import of one image creates a subfolder here, um, the default parameters come from this master config file, which initially points to that, which points to this one. But if you want, and if you're good at that, then you can delete this link and put a local copy of this there and call it 2DX master config, an actual text file that then has your optimized processing parameters for 45 degree tilted images. Yeah, and if you always use the same microscope with always the tilt axis in a certain direction, the tilt axis in a certain direction, then um, you can already preset the tilt geometry here so that maybe that helps you with automatic processing. But we tried to build this all so that you can do this automatic processing, hopefully fully automatically. And Marcel is also working um, on a version that you sit on the microscope and as soon as you save your TIFF image onto some network storage, <coughs> some uh, import function starts automatically and does this all automatically and already processes this, the images automatically so that you sit on your microscope, and when you're done with the microscope, you go for lunch and you come back to the computer and you have the process results on your screen. Yeah? So it's in preparation, that function. Um, so now you try to process all images automatically. It may also fail. It often fails. And then there's two approaches. If you have automatic data collection, yeah, Leginon-based, hopefully we hear more about that 
um, also for 2D crystals, um, Anshi is the most advanced person there, then you may just delete the pictures where the automatic processing failed, if you have thousands of them. But if you have 100 pictures in total, then it's worth going into every picture yourself manually and optimizing things. So then you don't do it automatically. But sometimes also the automatic function can help to save time and you see um, this and that and that step worked automatically and then here I need to manually fine tune something. So that it still may still be worth to try to do this automatic. <coughs> automatic processing in 2DX Merge works so that when you have imported many images, you, cl you activate the ones that you want um, to be active and then you launch this script, reprocess or process all images, and you click on go. And then 2DX Merge will launch 2DX image for each of those and execute all standard scripts on these. Yeah, and if you set the parameters so that executing every standard script is the right thing, then this should process all your images. We can demonstrate this here. 2DX Merge. Um, is this one here? So um, we have we have a few images, and I don't do this now. But we have a few images. I then go to um, this here and just click on Go, and then it would open 2DX image on each of them. So the, it does something like this. It opens 2DX image, and then it executes all standard scripts. I double click here on the bar, then it's all, and then 2DX merge does this, and it's without opening the graphical user interface. It runs in the background. And you can do that overnight also. And then all these here are executed one after the other, and the result is saved in the local database, and 2DX image is quit again. And 2DX merge would do this then for all of them. So... <clears throat> um, No, this is something else. Okay. So and now, once we have processed many images, like at the moment we speak about only the non-tilted images. Yeah? So you have images from non-tilted crystals, 100 or so, or maybe 20. Then you need to merge them together. Each image has defocus-dependent ton rings, and those are resolution ranges where you have no measurements. Yeah? The, the ton rings, these black rings, they don't show you any spots because the contrast transfer function made these spots invisible. Um, but if you combine different images with different defocuses, then you can fill these gaps in, and that's the reason why merging improves your resolution. Um, there's also other reasons. So if you want to merge data in 2DX Merge, the first thing is you set your models to 2D work. Tomorrow we speak about the 3D mode. Today it's 2D. Um, then you select your best image, only one, and you run this function merge once to create a reference. And this reference will be used to align all the images, the other images too. Um, I can show this in 2DX Merge. So these are non-tilted images. Um, <clears throat> this is from Fabian. He gave us a talk on um, Tuesday about um, his data set, so you have seen this before. Um, there is these columns here, the um, quality value after the second unbending, and I just sort all these images by this quality value, and then the best quality value may be the best image. So I go to this one, maybe I just open this, um, 32, image 32, and Fabian processed it, and in the end, the final map looks like that, yeah, okay. That's the map. So here's the SIDS protein. Um, this now needs to be centered. And here it is already centered. Otherwise, so this um, symmetry center should be in the, in the middle of the map. Um, here's another symmetry center. So actually we have two, two by two unit cells here. And this is one unit cell. And this one is centered in the middle of this unit cell. And we can speak later about how you center one image so that it's on a um, symmetry-related center. So we have one image that is nice and perfect. <clears throat> and then I 
deactivate them all and I take my very best image only, only one, and I run this script <coughs> merge once. And what that does is, um, the most important thing, it uh, takes the amplitude and phase information from this image and creates this file here. And this file is called merge.aph, amplitude and phase. And, and now we have it, and that's our reference, and to that we will align all the, the other images. Yeah, but um, by running this merge once with only one image, you create your reference. Um, if I look into this file, merge APH, um, this is what it has. It's, it's a text file. It contains some dummy number for merging. That number doesn't matter. It's 1001. And then it has um, the reflection number yeah, the, in Fourier space. The Miller indices 0, 2 um, is the reflection. And this had a little bit of tilt, so there is a little bit of z-star height information, but we could also ignore this. We want to deal with non-tilted images, so this is supposed to be zero. Then it has an amplitude measurement, 52,000 for this 0-2 reflection, and the phase information, minus 14 degrees. And this micrograph number was 3200, 3, and then there is a background intensity, 5,000. So 52,000 is the amplitude, and 5,000 is the background. That's that's 10 times weaker than the spot itself. Um, and so this one has an IQ value of 1. It's a high-quality spot. Um, this, I think, is some weight. And this is the contrast transfer function's value at that point, which comes from the uh, CDF. So at the moment, we have this file. And all reflections only show up once. Um, and all come from the image 3200. And for each reflection, we have an amplitude and a phase. And if you look at the phases, you can see already the first one, 14, is close to zero. The others, 135, 160, 170, they're close to 180. This one is 84. It doesn't know if it wants to be zero or 180, um, but it's an IQ6 spot. That's a bad spot anyway, so it doesn't matter. But then the strong spots, this one has an IQ2. It's the spot 0, 10. It has a phase of 3.9 degrees, close to 0. So you can already recognize how this image likes to have phases 0 or 180. So this is our reference. We created this from one image. And what you then do is um, you select all the others, maybe without the first one, because the first one is ready, and then you align all the others to your reference with this refine. Now we'll come to how that is done. And then they are all aligned, and then you can um, so it, and then you can remerge and realign them a few times. Um, then you do a final merge and you generate your final map and you're done. Yeah, so you just go through these steps here in the in the beginning. So a little bit to the background what happens there. We work in 2D, we check, take the best image, only one. We run merge once to create our merge.aph file, the reference. Then we select all images um, and run this refine once to align all other images to your reference. And we can do this iteratively another five times or so um, to refine the phase origins. Then we can regenerate these final maps and manually check if they actually all look the same. So you would do this refine once. Yeah. So it runs, and for each of these images, then they are aligned towards your reference. And then you regenerate these maps for all of them. And now this script will, for each image, run the last 2DX image script, this calculate map. And then um, you can see here at the bottom all these aligned final maps, and they please should all look the same. Yeah, so, and if you have a trained eye and you watched at this for months, then you see here in the middle is this one thing. Yeah, this is okay. This is okay. This is bad. This looks different, right? So I can't understand anything here. This one is ugly, but anyway, it's okay. This one is ugly. Uh, so, yeah. And then you say, okay, I don't, I really don't know what is here. And you can open this image into the image and try to save something, 
or you just say, I don't want to deal with that. I deactivate it, yeah? I take it out. Um, <clears throat> there are still enough others that, that are good enough. You can just go through this list and see which one you like and which one not. We sorted them all by this quality value, so the best ones are on the top, and the bad ones are at the bottom, and you can also see this here. Yeah? So the, and then with the remind, remaining ones, you can still do this um, merge and refine a few times iterative. Um, there's also a counter, I think. Wasn't there a counter? Yeah. Okay, if you have a bigger screen than here, then, then there's a little number, and you can set the counter to 10 rounds or 2 rounds or so. In the end, you, do, you merge it all together a final time, and then you calculate your merged map. And <clears throat> here it is. That's your averaged final map. And how to optimize display parameters here is something we can deal about later. Deal with later. So... Um, <clears throat> we find ones, we have this. So now, um, there are lots of things that can go wrong. And what happens here in the background is that 2DX Merge calls all these MRC programs. In 2DX Image, the program MMBox reads out from one image the, for each reflection number, the amplitude and the phase and the background um, calculates an IQ value for each spot, and it has a CTF value not yet populated. And this is for one image, the amplitude and phase file. And then 2DX image still does the CTF correction. And the CTF correction takes the text file we just saw and now calculates the contrast transfer function, correction function, with this Wiener filter correction term. Um, it's not yet applied, but at least the phases are already um, flipped by 180 degrees. So sometimes 180 degrees phase shift is added to the phase. Um, but the amplitude is still the original amplitude. Um, and this is what CTF apply does. It's an MRC program. And this all happens in 2DX image. And then in 2DX merge, all these files are taken and merged together. And in 2DX Merge, the program Auric Tilt is used, and this is the most impressive program from the MRC package. Auric Tilt is a gigantic program that can also refine parameters. It can refine the beam tilt yeah, and deal with a complex contrast transfer function and so on. Auric Tilt would take all these CTF corrected uh, amplitude and phase files from CTF apply from all these images and merge them into one large. APH file, which now comes from many images, not only one. And you have the H and K and Z star coordinates of each reflection. You have an amplitude measurement and a phase measurement. Um, the phases are already phase flipped from CTF apply, but the amplitudes are still the original ones. 2DX merge keeps track of from which micrograph which measurement came. And then we have IQ values, a weight, the background information from the amplitude, and the CDF. And this is all done in auric tilt. And then for each reflection, the reflection 2-0, for example, we still have many measurements, so probably 10 if you have 10 images. So if you have symmetry, you can have 80 reflections or so from one image, from 10 images. And then the next program comes, AVRAMS, Average Amplitudes in Phases, yeah? Pardon? Why are there IQ values that are negative? No, I don't. I forgot that. That's some. Okay, right. Good. So when the CTF is it's negative in both cases. Okay, so may maybe this is a just to memorize that these phases have already been have flipped, been flipped by 180 degrees, whereas this is the original phase. I, I don't remember it. Well, you don't have to know this one. So an IQ uh, minus, minus one is the same as the whole. So I don't know. I'm not so sure. Yeah. This is minus an IQ. So this is an IQ6 and that's an IQ2. So the, the reflection 2 0, yeah, 2 0 in, in the Fourier space. For this, we have now here three measurements, but I, I abbreviated this file 
um, it, it's more. Yeah? So in this, at the moment, in this merge APH file, we have for each reflection many lines, yeah? maybe 10 or so. And then the next program is AVRAMS, Average Amplitudes and Phases. And this one takes this um, merge APH and averages all these numbers together so that now for the reflection 2.0, we have only one entry, one amplitude, one phase, and one figure of merit. This now looks useful. Yeah, this looks like we can use it to make a map with that. And now also, it's, we are not having a Z star value anymore, the, the vertical height, but now it's already um, digitized as zero or one or so, yeah. one or two in, in a vertical direction. It's an HKL file and not an HKZ star. So before we had many measurements. Um, the amplitude was 120, 150, 200, so on average 160. The phase was minus 160, plus 160, plus 170. It's all close to 180. Minus 180 and plus 180 is the same thing, right? So these are all close to 180. And Avrams for the 2.0 now has an average phase of minus 177. That's close to 180. With an average amplitude of 450. And that is because now this value was CTF corrected, also in amplitude. Before these amplitudes, 120, 150, 200, they are not yet CTF corrected. Yeah, the, the factor that we should um, divide these by for CTF correction is given here. And then we set an upper limit, maximally three times increase um, as Wiener filter protection. We don't boost our noise too much. And after IVRAMS, the amplitude is now um, brought to the hopefully correct value. But if you would have electron diffraction data, you could make this much better, as we have seen yesterday. Yeah, and then electron diffraction data should replace these. But the phases here are, are useful. And this is then one file where you have HKL in 3D Fourier space, and you have an amplitude in phase and a quality measure in percent. And you, this can be given to CCP4 programs to refine things, to make the whole file better, um, and to make a map in the end. The first program here is um, Amplitudes to MPZ. MPZ is this binary CCP4 format um, to go into the CCP4 world. So if you deal with single particles, ribosomes, and just align them and average them, and you have 100 perfect particles and you put a very bad particle that is wrongly aligned onto that, you make your average worse, right? You don't want that. Here, not. If you have 10 perfect images and you add a bad image on top of that, you're most likely not making it worse, maybe even better. So adding a bad image to a good average can make the final result maybe even better because it's happening in Fourier space for each spot. That's, that's a great invention, I find. Henderson, again. So each spot, the spot 2.0, has amplitudes and phases, but also the background, and it has this IQ value. And the IQ value here can be 2 or 4. And during the merging, it will um, trust the IQ2 spot much more than the IQ4 spot when calculating the average phase. So this, this one is minus 160, um, but it's only IQ4, so it's, it's less less taken into consideration. The mathematical, mathematical precise way is you have, for the phases, you have lots of measurements for the spot 10-3. That's a 4.7 angstrom spot. The phases all go into a certain direction, probably zero degree is horizontal, and then some have plus 30 degrees, others have minus 20 degrees. And now what is the average phase? And the average phase is um, calculated in a similar way as graphically represented here. Um, for each measurement, a line is drawn with a length proportional to 1 over IQ square, so that a strong spot gives you a longer line. And then all these lines are added together, and this gives one final vector, and the angle of this final vector shows you what the final phase is. So if you have 10 good images and you add one bad one that goes into the wrong direction, like here, you have a very good measurement, all other, so this is an IQ1, IQ2 spots, IQ3 spots, and then there is an IQ7 spot that goes in completely in the wrong phase direction. This doesn't matter because this one is shorter because the other ones dominate anyway. 
And so if you have one image that has many, in free space, many reflections, some are good and some are bad, um, the good ones will improve your measurement and the bad ones don't mat matter too much because they're downweighted during the averaging. This is why you, you don't have to be too much afraid of adding bad images to good ones if your bad images at least contain still some value. So averaging, averaging happens in Fourier space for each reflection and IQ weighted. So this is before Avrams and then after Avrams. We have discussed that. Um, and then you go to the CCP4 world where you deal then with MPZ files. Those are binary files. Um, yeah. So all this workflow, what I had here, is, is this the last slide? Yeah, is described on our web page. And on this 2DX web page, you have so 2DX.org, you have um, the documentation, 2DX software manual, and there's one section that's called data flow. And in this data flow um, section, there's at the moment three files. One deals with processing one image in 2DX image. The next one deals with 2D merging and the next one with 3D merging. If you look at this 2D merging file, um, it shows more or less what I just had on these slides. It shows which programs are called, in which order, so Auric Tilt, Avrams, Centric, some other programs, yeah, and in the end, F2MPZ. And for each of these, it shows um, what the files should look like and what the definition of the columns is, because in the files you don't have that. H, K, Z star, amplitude, phase, and it tells you the phase is already phase flipped, but the phase origin is already applied. Okay, that's a different topic. And the weight, oh, the weight, well, we have to still find out what the weight is. Um, so you can look up here the, um, the flow of data. And you also need to check this when you deal with merging. Yeah? So when you merge, we have already merged 10 images together. Um, you have to open these files. This is now this average file. And you have to really open this and look at your measurements, look at your values. And you have to check um, for my reflections. Oh, this is still all from only one. Anyway, what amplitudes, what phases do I have? Is there some bug that suddenly you have stars? Or is the amplitudes only 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 because you, you have too small values or too large values? Um, and if you think you found a problem, you should ask somebody for help, for example, us in Basel, um, and we would be happy to help you there. So the main program here is Auric Tilt that does this merging. And Auric Tilt is an MRC program by Richard Henderson. Now, these MRC programs are Fortran programs, and they start in the beginning with a header. And the header um, has comment lines, which are ignored by the program later. They start with a C. And the program with the program text in Fortran shows you the name and then what Richard Henderson wrote there. RH is Richard Henderson. And you can see here that um, the version 1.02 is dated 1984. And then over the years, what he added to this program. Um, and then some description of what this does. And then here, the, the header explains what this Fortran program expects. It expects, if you would call it from the command line, line by line, the following input. It would expect in the first line um, these parameters. So you would have to tape, type 1, 2, comma, yes, comma, bean tilt value, and so on, and then take, type enter. And then in the second line, um, these parameters. In the third line, these parameters. And, so on. and what these parameters mean is explained later in the Fortran program, which is here, where it says, well, the first parameter ISPG GRP is the space group number. The next parameter is NPROC, can be 0, 1, 2, or 3, and it means the following. Yeah? And you can check here what this Fortran program means. And I think you should read at or look at these things, and then it tells you what the output looks like. And you should look at the header at least. 
Yeah, you don't have to understand the fault run, but you should look at the header and see what the program expects. Um, and this one is the most complicated of all of them. Yeah? So all the other MRC programs are easier. And we tried to use this program. Um, and to call this program is usually done either from the command line in the old times or from a C shell script. And so we have these C shell scripts. And this here would be how you call auric tilt. And you would call auric tilt in the following way. You would call it. This one is our version 2DX, which has a few more options, but it's essentially the basic auric tilt. And then it would get all these parameters. Now it gets it from the 2DX Merge graphical user interface um, that define what symmetry you have and so forth. And then for each image data set that goes in, um, can I make this smaller? Yeah, so this is how it should look like. For each image data set that goes in, there is a few lines um, of, of numbers like the tilt geometry and the lattice parameters and the defocus for each image. And this, this uh, is a text file that then calls to the xmerge or auric tilt and, and launches it. And what we have done in, in 2DX is that if you click on this script, what happens is that um, with, for all these uh, images here, we have a little own program that goes into all the config files and assembles a script, this merging script. And this merging script is then started. And this script runs auric tilt, the MRC program. And this here, the log file, is the output of auric tilt. And then other programs evaluate the output of auric tilt. And if the phase origin or the tilt geometry or the beam tilt was refined by auric tilt, then 2DX Merge will find these values and put them back into the local databases for each image. Now, Auric Tilt can refine the, the tilt angle, and then it goes for each image and says, well, actually, you think you are 30 degrees, but you are 31 degrees. And so this log file, you have to look at it. Yeah? And I would actually look at it each time you run it. And this is the output from Auric Tilt. Yeah? And um, the output shows you what it read in. Oh, this is only one. Um, so I need to run this refine once. So this is the output of the refine step. And in this refine step, where is it? Oh, I need a larger um, so what these parameters are we can deal with that in the afternoon um, so if you look through this um, it contains at a certain point for each image a map like this and this is a cross correlation map between the reference and this one image. And they didn't have gray values in 1984, so they used numbers. And the number five is here in the middle, is a peak in the cross correlation map. And this shows you that this image was centered correctly already before this happened. Um, the first time you would have a new image, this peak may be in a corner, and then after correct alignment, it should be in the center. So this is the cross correlation map that shows you you have your reference and here's your image and if you center them correctly then the cross correlation peak should be in the middle. And you can check here, do you actually have a peak? Did this one image um, get centered correctly? Um, and then above of this, on top of this cross correlation map there is a table and the table shows you in the resolution range between 100 angstroms and 14 angstroms there were 33 reflections that were used for this cross correlation map um, and their phase residual was 21 degrees that's okay and further down here in the resolution range between eight angstroms and seven angstroms there were only six reflections left and their phase residual after this cross correlation map was 75 degrees so they didn't really help 45 is random or 90, 90 is random but this is too high 
You can check here in this table up to which resolution this alignment more or less worked. Um, and this is how it should look like. If instead you see um, there was zero reflections compared, then you know something is wrong. And you should look at this log file and see if this text here somehow makes sense to you. Yeah? And compare this with um, from one image to the next one. And with all the automation that you put into 2D X merge or so, um, you still have to do this. You still have to look at this log file and, and for this one step each time you run it. So, important parameters during the merging are these here. Um, the step size of the phase origin search and the number of steps. In single particle microscopy, you have your ribosome average structure and you have a single particle and you want to align it so that they are all the same and then average. Here we do more or less the same, but in Fourier space. You have your one reference and you want to align your data set onto that. And the alignment is not done by shifting the particle in your image, but by changing the phases for the phase origin. And um, if you change the phase by 180 degrees, you shift your your image by half a unit cell, the maximum you can change is 360 degrees. And what we do here um, is, if you want to search everywhere, you have to search for 360 degrees, the whole space. And this can be done with 121 um, comparisons in a three degree step range. And that is then 360 degree search. And the first course alignment is done this way. 121 tests at a three degree um, search range. And when you have roughly centered them, then you can do fine alignment only. And then you would say, I only want 61 um, tests to speed it up of only half a degree, 0 0.5 degree um, search range. So then, then you, you only cover plus minus three, plus minus 30 degree um, search range. Then you don't search this again, but on, only this for fine alignment. These two are the important parameters at the moment. Um, you can see this this afternoon. Then you're done with merging. I'm done with my presentation. Okay. So we have a coffee break, and then um, we hear about maximum likelihood. Oh, you have a question. Mm -hmm. So the first time I would do the course alignment, covering the entire 360 degrees, then I would regenerate the maps with the new phase origins to actually see where they move to. Um, and then I would look through the maps and see if they all make sense roughly. Yeah? So here, these two, for example, they are not the same. Yeah? So the course alignment did some, somehow something, but, but they, they're, they're not precisely aligned. Yeah? Um, there's also the amount of change that is applied. It's given here, the phase origin changed. The first two were not changed, but this one was actually shifted by six degrees in one direction and 12 degrees in the other. So this is why it was de-aligned. Yeah? It was better before probably. So you can see here if this works. Um, so I first would do a coarse alignment step and then I would do a fine alignment step. The fine alignment step is, uh, where's this parameter here? 61 steps of half a degree. And I would do this in the fine, oh, wrong button. I would do this a few iterations. Um, so I merge this together and refine it. And I merge and refine and merge and refine. And while this runs, you can look at these, uh, where's this? Um, phase origin changes. They should converge to zero. In the end, nothing should change anymore. You are choosing the wrong screen. Here, yeah. So you need a slightly bigger screen for, for all this to be really readable, yeah. So this is the output of um, auric tilt, how it refines 
Um, so the tilt angle, it didn't change, but the phase origin changed, not. This one did not change, here it did not change. Here it changed a little bit by half a degree in one direction. Okay, so this is, um, this is, so it should converge to zero. Um, so this is the iterative uh, merge and refine. And then in the end, I regenerate all my maps. Um, if you look at them here, yeah, now, now these, these are actually all fine. I don't like this one, so it's off anyway. I don't like this one because it just looks different. You can also look at face residuals. Face residual 40 degree is actually bad, 70 degree is bad. So you just take that out. Um, here we have this option, show only the selected directories. Then you don't, you don't have the other stuff in the list anymore. It's, the list gets shorter. So now we have only the ones that are still active. And then the remaining ones you merge together and you make the final map, uh, which is this one. So, um, and then in, while calculating the final map, there's also this, in the final merge, there's this face residual table um, that shows you what resolution you have, um, resolution range. Um, here, this is from eight to 7.7. .7. Angstrom resolution, we have no IQ1 spot here, zero, but we have four IQ spot, two spots in this resolution range. They have an average phase residual of 21 degrees. Um, we have between 7.7 .7 and 7.2, two IQ2 spots that are strong. They should be correct. They have a phase residual of 116 degrees. At least one of them is badly wrong. So here it would be worth checking while these two really high resolution spots are so bad. Um, that would be worth it. And there is an easy way to do that, which is if you go to this file, reflections after auric tilt. This is the reflection 01, amplitude and phase, and it has a line here. And the line is uh, displaying the IQ value, how long it is. So you can quickly see the strong spots and these spots are all close to zero. This is the spot zero two, um, amplitude and phase. And then you can just go through this and say, okay, those were zeros, these are 180s. If the IQ spots are all nine, then nothing is plotted here. These are all 180s. Um, and I'm looking for a high resolution spot in the order of seven angstroms resolution where there's an obvious problem. Here, for example, there is an obvious problem. This spot is an IQ, Free spot. It comes from micrograph number 2600. It's an IQ3 spot, which should has a good chance of being a true spot. Um, but the phase is 160, whereas all the others are closer to zero. So probably this is a zero degree phase, but this one image here, uh, 2600, has the wrong phase for the spot 111. So if I have enough time, I go to the to this image, which image was that? 2600. 2600. Uh, where's my 2600? Here. I open this and I go to the 111 spot. Um, show me the 111 spot. Ah, I need the CTF perhaps. This is what I want to look at. Um, so where's my 111 spot? Uh, here's H and here's K for the orientation. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is IQ3. And this one has the wrong phase. Yeah, so this one here. So this one, this spot here has the wrong phase. And guess why? Because it probably this ton ring here shouldn't be here, but it should be here. Yeah, and then the phase would flip by 180 degrees. And even though it's so close to the ton ring, it's still IQ3, so it's interesting. So, but this one is correct, and this one has the wrong phase, so the ton ring has to move a bit. And then you can go in and say, well, maybe I have to change the defocus slightly by a few nanometers, and then the phase of this one is correct, and so I'm on the good side. There's also a program for that. And the program um, is in 
to the X-image, and this is called Refine Defocus. Yeah, and the Refine Defocus, you can run it as a test, or you can actually run it and it then writes it in. So I run it as a test only. We can say we want to use our average file, one of those, um, as reference, and then refine the defocus. Let's see if this works. So at the moment, I did not find something. We need this. So the starting defocus is 1100 and uh, 11,000 and 10,000 angstroms. Yeah, that's the defocus that we did manually. And then it runs an MRC program to refine the defocus by just shifting the tone rings a little bit and see sees if the phase residuals get better. There's some problem here. And there, there's a not, not a number problem, so a bug. Okay, and then you would file a bug report and say, I, I'm at the process where I try to refine my defocus and I have a not a number number here. Can you please see what that is? And then with a bit of luck within one night or so, we can fix that. So this program tries to refine the defocus by shifting ton rings and sees if the face residuals go better. But the face residuals shouldn't start at 84 degrees. They should start at 30 degrees. So don't know where the problem is at the moment. So in any case, in this text file, the purpose of this text file is to be able to quickly scan through this and say all 180, yeah, and this is all strong spots. And then there was one very high resolution spot, um, you know, where you had an obvious problem. Um, we had 712 already. So what's this one here? They're all around 180 degrees except this one, and this one comes from 250. So there must be another ton ring on the wrong position for the spot 88. And you can look this up and change the defocus and make sure this one also agrees with the others. Yeah, that's manual fine tuning. And this is a file, Auric Tilt Reflections log file, um, which is printed out only if you set this. Um, list reflections into log file parameter to yes. Then it shows up here. This is one of the little additions that we did to this auric tilt file. Originally this file wouldn't exist. So we really should, yeah? Uh, no, <laughs> it should, but it's a bug. It's, so um, 2DX merge overwrites them. It ignores the locking. But what you can do is you can set uh, 2DX merge here with this button at the at the bottom to dry run, and then it runs it without um, refining any value. It just reports it here, but then doesn't do anything. So if you set this to dry run and then refine something, then it... it calculates all the um, improved parameters here, but it doesn't put them into any database. That's what you can do as a test. What you can also do is when you have all your data, and that's actually a very important thing, you can backup your entire database. Uh, where is this? Not this one. Um, Why did this happen? So, um, backup databases. So here, um, this is a script that allows you to take the databases from 2D from all images, and and copy them onto some backup position. There's three backup positions, so you can copy all 2D image config files, including their face residuals and defocus and so, to some backup position, position eins, and you can say, okay, this is, this is, is during the workshop. And then you just um, run this, and then it makes bzz, copies of all, all image files. 
all of them, also the, the non-selected. So only the selected or all of them. So did it do that? Oh, I have to say, yes, I'm sure. It's a smart parameter. Yes, I'm sure. Okay, so just, okay, and then one is, one, one isn't processed yet in the trash. Okay, so they take only the selected images. Why doesn't this? Oh, do I select it? Right, okay. No, I did. Well, we go into more. Okay. Okay, but usually you can copy this onto onto backup position, and then you can you can work with it. And if you don't like it, you restore it. Okay. Yeah, that's the other option. Um, you can sometimes we have several people in a lab that work on the same project. Yeah, three people want to do image processing, and then um, you would have on some network storage the entire file, and with this script you can. Um, pull from the remote location onto your local computer the entire project, and then process stuff, and then push it back onto the NAS, onto the network storage. Um, and when doing this, it checks the date of the configuration file um, so that it only overwrites um, for one image the database if your version is newer. So if you work on five images out of the 1,000 and your colleague works on another five images out of the 1,000, this uh, would synchronize correctly that only the newest versions is always submitted and in full. But uh, uh, back to the remote directory or the directory that we did in there, not the local directory, so this would copy also the TIFF files and everything, but only if they aren't there yet. So the second time you push or pull something, it's very fast. Because it checks if it, if the big files is already there, then it doesn't do it a second time. Um, whereas this database thing only goes for this config file, which is just these parameter files, the small text files. Yeah. Yeah. So somehow this this didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee.